Hi, I'm Pierre, brought to you by DigiKey. Thanks, DigiKey. This week it is a bell. Every single week we look at the hottest, newest new product introductions. And this week, Lady Ada, what is it? Okay, this week we are looking at some MagJack uh, Ethernet and USB jacks from Bell Fuses. Um, I use these myself and I think they're awesome. They are, this is just an example of one, there's a couple of variants we'll show off. Um, they are Ethernet jacks that have built in magnetics. Very, very handy when you're doing Ethernet projects. Um, you know, some people might think, like, well, Ethernet's like this really old, like 1980s technology. Why are we even talking about it when we have Wi Fi and yeah. Bluetooth and Zigbee? But, you know, Ethernet rules. Um, it's reliable. You don't have SSIDs and passwords. It's plug and play. Um, you know, we've multi gigabyte Ethernet now using the same. Cat5, Cat6 cables that we've been using for quite a while. Um, you know, we have our house wired with Ethernet. It's it's great. I, I actually think, you know, more people should be using Ethernet um, when they think they should be using Wi-Fi, especially since you can do PoE, uh, power over Ethernet as well. And so you get um, the benefits of Internet and only one cable to power and, and network your devices. So, you know, Raspberry Pis have Ethernet. A lot of dev boards have Ethernet. Um, you know, the, the use an RJ45 cable to transmit, like I said, you can do power, but essentially data, um, and they can go hundreds and hundreds of meters. Um, and to use Ethernet, like I'm going to be talking about microcontrollers, microcomputers usually use a USB to Ethernet adapter, like the Raspberry Pi has a PCA or USB uh, bridge to an Ethernet chip. But a lot of microcontrollers these days actually are starting to come with um, what is called an Ethernet Mac, which is not the same as the MAC address. This is a like the underlying um, protocol management access core or something. I don't remember what MAC stands for. That does this the packet generation and and um, transmission and reception and collision detection of Ethernet using the uh, four wires that dual transmit and the dual receive. So once you've got that, for example, the ESP three two has built-in ability to ethernet you can't just connect it directly to the rj45 jack that the ethernet goes to you need to have this magnetic transformer in between to balance the output because it's a differential output also you want to protect it because the cables are really long and you have these exposed wires and you can have high voltages and spikes coming in on it so you want to first clean up the signal a little bit but also you do want to have electric isolation ethernet should not be earth grounding you should have no because the cables can be so long there's no guarantee what ground is on the other side. So um, they have you know, full isolation inside using transformers that also sometimes do um, level shifting because I think the signals is plus minus 2.5 volts. In this case, your microcontroller might be doing 3.3 volts plus or minus. There's also chips like the WizNet, which is um, SPI to Ethernet. Ditto, as you see here in this example schematic from the WizNet eval board, there is this transformer kit in the center that does um, signal, you know, cleanup and also electrical isolation. So um, that sits between the jack and the microcontroller. You can get from Bell these discrete LAN magnetics. And there's like, you know, depending on the application, the price and the size and the speed and the voltage and, you know, what your chip is expecting for impedance, there's like a couple dozen different options. But basically, like, there's guaranteed to be one. And inside these, um, black rectangles is, and there's no chips inside there. Literally, it's just like a PCB with the magnetics embedded inside and maybe a capacitor and, and some, um, trend, yeah, not transistor, but uh, protection diodes, etc. And I've seen them used on some boards. For example, this seed uh, Ethernet shield, um, you can see that that says group tech in the middle um, next to the Ethernet jack. Because space was not at a premium and like you know, they wanted to reduce price as much as possible, uh, I'm assuming that's why they went with a separate jack and magnetics. But if you're designing something like the Ethernet Featherwing and you want it to be a single-sided board, you want it to be um, optimized for space, like I don't want, you know, I didn't have space in this design to have jack plus magnetics. Also, you get the benefit of having the magnetics inside of a, a metallic shell, which is um, grounded to your local device, it helps shield it a little bit. 
And so this has the magnetics inside the jack, and it's kind of nice because you just connect the pins and it, and you have maybe a couple of capacitors, or required a couple of series resistors, but um, all of the electromagnetic stuff is handled inside. And there's a lot of varieties available from Bell, from vertical to horizontal, plastic, metal, with LEDs, without LEDs. Um, you know, one of them was in stock. A lot of them are available. They're all like you know two to three dollars, basically, uh, in quantity. One they get more or less expensive. But um, you know, if you if size is at a premium, absolutely, this is the way to go. But also, like you might prefer not to have two components. It might end up being about the same price to have it integrated. Um, it might make for a more elegant build. And like I said, the EMI might be reduced. Um, it's a quick thing to do if you're like, hey, I'm, I'm noticing that my product isn't passing my electromagnetic tests, you know, update to one of these uh, mag jacks. And, you know, that might be enough to um, reduce the emitted noise. Uh, each uh, product comes with uh, the pinup. There is kind of like a standardized pinup, of course, if it's like vertical versus horizontal or it's sunk in versus not, it might matter. So check the day sheet. They're all going to be through hole. Um, there's no question about that. However, you can do pin and pad. And like I've seen companies get away with it for, you know, and then maybe you touch up a little bit on the mechanical connectors just for um, security. And then each one also has its own internal connectivity. So in this case, this one has the transformer and also has some resistances built in. And then, um, it, you know, looks like 1000 picofarad capacitor. Also, if they have the LEDs, uh, the LEDs might also have pinouts. And so you would um, connect those to your controller to link the RX and TX LEDs. Um, so the link and signal LEDs um, automatically through your controller chip, which is usually sometimes it's handled separately and sometimes it's built in. Um, like I said, I like the ones that have the LEDs built in. This one has little like fingers on the edge. So when you uh, put it into your enclosure, if it's metal, you can uh, earth shield the whole thing. This one's vertical, you know, convenient if um, you have a back panel or if you want to have the connector coming from the top. And then what I thought was also kind of neat is this, they also have a couple combo um, ports. So this is um, cute because it's very compact. You get two USB uh, plus one ethernet with signal LEDs as well. And these are, like I said, there's a couple of varieties in stock right now for shipping from DigiKey. If you want to do ethernet, simplify your design, make your design compact. You want a reliable, ready to go magnetic included jack, check out these bell fuses. They're great. All right, let's go on. And that's this week's IMPI. That's this week's IMPI. Hi, on MPI.